Now, what's very important is we always like to do a pre-message charge. All right, we're gonna start, we'll just go ahead and go forth with it. So, James 1, 22 to 25. I know we flow out of the New King James Version. Uh, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror, but he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one, everyone say this one, yes. this, this one. one will be blessed in what he does. So here's the charge. Very, very important that anytime you are around the word of God, in particular, make sure that you are a doer and not just a hearer only. Amen? Amen. So the charge that God has for me, for all of you, is to make sure that you commit to yourselves right now. That you're going to take away at least one nugget that you're going to start doing this week. Amen? amen. So, well, again, we don't want to be just a hearer. We want to be a doer of the work. Now, preferably more than one. Amen? amen. But we're going, to come, then we're going to start with baby steps to make sure. I'm like all your babies. I'm saying we're going to start to make sure at least one uh, that you start doing this week. Amen? All right. Now, that's the topic for today. Faith in God for biblically guaranteed results. Faith in God for biblically guaranteed results. We're going to look at our foundation scripture. This is Mark 11, 24. It reads, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe you receive them, and you will have them. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, God's objective for today is this. It's threefold. Number one, to move you from a place from believing in God to believing God. From believing in God to believing God. That's key. We have to understand God and his word are the same. They're the one. We have to understand that. So when you have faith in God, you have faith in his word. People often ask, what's the will of God? The will of God is his word. Amen? Because he, he, in written form by inspired word, wrote in a book through godly people the manuscript. That's his will. The will tells us, tells us what we want. That's God's will. His will, his word, and God, they're the same. Amen? So again, when you can play from believing in God to believing in God. Number two, um, that you commit as a lifestyle to not just quote the word, but do the word. Let that settle in. Number three, third objective that God has, that you choose to live by faith. It's a lifestyle. Amen? Now, so let's define faith. We've talked, talked about it, so let's, let's kind of go into it. Now, I, this particular New English translation, faith is being sure of what you hope for and being convinced of what you do not see. Being sure of what you hope for and convince of what you do not see. That's faith. Now, we're going to talk about this because sometimes this happens. There's a difference between faith and hope. Now, we need hope. It's, it's, a, it's a good, broad thing, right? So, it's different from hope. Hope is the, if we look at a, a visual, hope is the container. But faith is something that goes in the container. If you're thirsty, it's good to see a water bottle. But the bottle itself is the container. You're thirsty, you want the water that's in it. This is a natural example, but you gotta go, if you go back to the definition, faith is being sure of what you hope for and then certain what you do not see. Hope is the container. Faith is the something that's in it. Another translation will read, faith is the something that things hope for, the evidence of things not seen. That's another translation. So again, hope is different from faith. Hope's a container, faith is something. Here's some examples of hope. Hope is hope is having <laughs> my previous pastor used to well, no, not my previous pastor, another pastor used to use this example. Uh, the ship is going down. Hope gives you a positive attitude while the ship is going down. If you ever seen the movie Titanic, yeah. if y'all remember the movie Titanic, the one with uh, DiCaprio in it, right? 
So there, the ship was going down. It was messed up. And you had the four guys playing the violin. Right now, everyone else is scattering doing everything else, and they were just playing the violin. Think about that image. Hope, again, hope is having a positive attitude when the ship is going down. But faith saves you from the ship going down. Faith is the action. So you need a combination of both. Hope is the, the positive attitude, the, the niceness about things happening, but the faith is the action that gets you out of the situation or gets you into something that you desire. Amen? Another example of hope is, here, here's, I'm going to walk down your street a little bit. Hope is praying and then not being sure if it's going to happen. When that happens, you're, you, didn't, you weren't in faith, you were in hope. When you pray to our Father and then walk away and you not sure if that actually is going to happen, like what you just prayed about, you were, you, at that point in time, you were in hope, not in faith. Hope is secretly in your heart giving God a 50-50 chance. Now, we don't say that. But in our actions, in our heart, that's what we're doing. But we're going to walk through. We're going we're gonna to walk through. We just want to clarify. Amen? Everybody say amen. 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 All right. Amen. Now, according to faith to the believer, when I say believer, we're talking about those who receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and you choose to believe in Jesus Christ. Amen? So, a believer. According to faith to the believer. Number one, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen. That's the foundation right there. Mm -hmm. Like, we know we have to live by faith because there's nothing else. we got to please God. Amen? Because, again, we got to make sure we're pleasing God. That's, that's his key. Because we got to believe that he is and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen. Again, all these scriptures, you can look, go back and reference, take your pictures, take your notes, go back and check me out. You can just make sure, you know, what you heard is true. Number two, another reason why faith is important for the believer, all the promises of God are received by faith in God. All the things that you want, once you are, once you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, come by faith. Faith in God. You have to understand that. Amen? Amen. Now. So let's lay some foundation. I'm going to lay some foundation first before we get heavy into the faith part. Because we got to understand that this is some of the things that, that have unknowingly occurred. we got to understand that God's spirit. You read, look at the scripture right there. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We don't see a physical manifestation of God walking to the wild while talking about, can I get free on pump car? Does anybody, does anybody see that? I don't think so. God is spirit. Everything God does is in the spirit realm. We talk about foundation here. The spirit realm is unseen. Again, we just laying some foundation for we have heavy in faith. You gotta understand this part. God is spirit, and everything he does is in the spirit realm. The spirit realm is unseen. Got it? Got it. All right. Now, to further understand faith, it's important to understand that there's a seen realm and an unseen realm. You gotta follow me. I'm not talking about some weird science stuff. It's biblically true. This is the reality. The unseen realm is more real than the seen realm. Now, there's a, there's a seen realm and an unseen realm. Again, you reference Colossians 1 and 16, but we'll look at Hebrews 11 and 3. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. The things which are seen, let's say my sneakers, were not made by things which are seen. It's made by something that was not visible. So what does that mean? These sneakers were in the mind of someone at somebody here at the Nike headquarters. Before they, before they made them, they were in the thought, they were in the process, they were in the unseen realm. It took something to get them to the seen realm to now be a, some sneakers that I could buy at a nice price, praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen? So again, there's a seen realm and unseen realm. We gotta understand that so we know God's a spirit. We know he operates in the spirit realm. We know the spirit realm is unseen. Amen? Amen. There's a seen realm and an unseen realm. Now, examples of some natural examples of the, uh, the you know, the, the, the seen realm. Catherine, right? 
Oh, God, my face will look. All right, that's the doing spot. You, you have a TV at home, Catherine? I do. Okay, how, how do you turn it on? Move the remote. Move the remote yeah. control, all right. So when you hit channel up, what happens? What, I'm sorry, when the remote control? The channel changes. Channel changes, when you hit volume down. Volume goes down. Do you ever see anything leaving the remote control going over and turning on the TV? But yet, when you hit volume up, what happens? It goes up. That's just a natural example that there are, there's an unseen realm that we don't see, but that is active. And we know it's radio waves and all those kind of things, but they're still unseen and they're doing something. That's not a seen realm. That's not the remote control. That's what the remote control is causing for that TV, amen? There's an unseen realm. We can do the same thing with radio sound waves. Again, when you turn on your radio in the car, the famous DJ that's on the radio isn't in the car seat with you. Right? Okay. But he, he or she exists somewhere. It's coming through to the transmitters and seeing it. There's an unseen realm. Now, location of our blessings. Now here, so we understand there's a seen realm, there's an unseen realm, we understand that God is a spirit. God operates in the spirit realm, which is the unseen realm. So we gotta understand this. When, really before the foundations of the world, but in particular when Jesus died and rose again, God made available for us all the blessings that you ever want. Both the things you currently want right now, as well as the things you don't even know you want in the future. They've already been made available. That's key. You gotta understand, it's already been made available. Now, you can reference 2 Peter 1, 2 through 4, but we'll look at 1 Peter 1 and 3. When it's already been made available, it's in the unseen realm. Got it? Because he said God is spirit. Mm -hmm. He operates in the unseen realm. So when Jesus died and rose again, again, it's been again placed in the unseen realm. Everything that you've ever wanted and desired. But don't believe me just because I say it. Never do that. Look at the word. Ephesians 1 and 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, let me get my pointer out here, has blessed. Past tense. Has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in where? In the heavenly places in Christ. It's already available. So when you, when you, next week, when you decide that you want some new, a new purse, ladies, you didn't surprise God like, oh, let me let me go hook Jackie up because I didn't know that was coming. No, he already knew he already made it available. He already made it available. Now, I need to use an example. In that unseen realm, God, I just say this as an example. When Jesus died and rose again, certainly before the foundation of the world, but in particular when that happened, God made for us available in the unseen realm a safe. Anybody kind of look up and just see a safe? In this, for that safe, that safe has all the blessings you've ever desired. Boldness to speak to people about Christ, a new job, whatever. Unbelievers, those who aren't Christians, they can't even see the safe. And then there are, are Christians who either because they don't know or have they, they haven't chosen yet to um, believe God at his word, they can see the safe but they can't get the stuff out of it. And then the third category are believers who can see the safe and they choose to believe God at his word and use their faith and it unlocks what's in the safe from the unseen realm into the seen realm. Why is that? Because here's the key. It's important to understand it's our faith in God that is the key that releases what's in the unseen realm into the seen realm, into your hands. It's our faith, I'll play it again. It's our faith in God that unlocks, that is the key that unlocks what's in the unseen realm, that's safe, into the seen realm. The faith is the key. Your faith in God is the key. Now, proof text. We'll take some time to look at all these. Matthew 9, 20 through 30. You can go back and look at the context. Uh, and when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus said to them, do you believe I am able to do this? They said to him, yes, Lord. 
They touch, he touched their eyes, saying, according to whose faith? Your faith, let it be to you. Not to Jesus' faith. Not to God's ability. Because those things aren't in question. Jesus already had his faith. We already know God can do whatever he wants. So that's not the question. Jesus said, according to your faith, let it be to you. And then what happened? And their eyes were opened. Look at another one. Matthew 13, 57 through 58. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. Now he, Jesus, you know our Lord and Savior, Jesus did not do many, did not, did not do many mighty works. Why? Not because of his ability, not because of his faith and trust in God, because of their unbelief. Not because he wasn't willing. Matthew 9, 22. But Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, Be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. Matthew 15, 28. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. It's our faith in God that's the key that releases from the unseen realm into the seen realm. God's a spirit. He operates in the unseen realm. He's already, been made, he's already made these blessings already available. How do we get it? It's our faith that unlocks what's in the unseen realm into the seen realm. Now, we got to get this part. It's not God's desire that we ever ask him for something and not receive it. Don't go based on your past experiences. Don't go based on Christian moms down the road or even pastor so-and-so or even brother so-and-so in the church. Go by the word of God. Amen. What does the word of God say? Because we said God and his word are one. His word tells us what he wants. It's his will. And this is a, there's a number of scriptures I could use. I just use this one. You can look them up yourself. Matthew 7, 11. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him? It's not his desire that he, we ask for things and not receive. Now, to be clear, our faith in God should be well-rounded. What does that mean? It should be on all aspects of the kingdom. When I say kingdom, those that receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, we are now kingdom citizens. Jesus is our king. The kingdom of God is God's system, method, and way of doing things. It's his government. Amen? So it's a way we operate. So, for example, praising God, that's a kingdom thing. You don't see the person on the street who's not a believer praising God. It, we're ambassadors. We're bringing what heaven is on earth like it is in heaven, right? We're ambassadors bringing what's in our spirit down to earth to spread and advance this kingdom of God. Amen. We're ambassadors. Amen? Amen. So we got to understand that. So our faith in God needs to be on all aspects of the kingdom. Yes, it's good to have the things to, to pray for the things you desire. Misplaced keys, mm -hmm. uh, a new job, a new purse. Sickness being removed from our radio body. Yes, God wants all that because he gets glory. But let's be clear, it should also be about other kingdom aspects as well. What does that mean? Praying to God in terms of maybe boldness to speak to somebody about Jesus Christ. Asking God for, to, for tomorrow, who is it that he may put in our path that he wants us to speak to, to about Jesus? Amen. Uh, local assembly meet. We're doing that at our church. We've been sawing into... Uh, the, 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 the dream fund. Thank God. I was about to say the billion account. The dream fund. That's, we're sowing into a kingdom project. Amen? Amen? So it's about all, it should be well rounded. All aspects of the kingdom. Both things that can bless the broader people. And also, also it's okay to yeah. ask for God for things for me as well. Yeah. Amen? Amen? As long as He's getting the glory. Amen. Now, this proof text, 1 John 3 and 22. And whatever we ask, 
we receive from him because we keep his commandments. I mean, not just the ten. The commandments are the things he tells us to do. That's a command. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. And do those things that are pleasing in his sight. When we do those things, we can expect that God's going to always honor his word. Amen. He's going to do it regardless of whether we choose to believe it. But we got to understand that. Now, here's a question. I got the real believers in here, right? Okay. So, has there ever been a time in your walk with God? Pick one today. Because what God's given to you, if you do it, is just going to change. But pick one today. Has there ever been a time in your walk with God that you prayed for something and didn't receive? Yes. yes. Raising my hand. So, if God says, if God says that he does... Whatever we ask when we pray, believe we have received and we shall have it. We just bring that scripture to Mark 11. And he also says, all the promises of God in Jesus are yes, and in Jesus, amen. What happened? Well, here's the thing. Thank you, Jackie. You're exactly right. We got to understand this. It may have just been something that we just didn't know. God's going to honor his word. He just said it. Whatever things you have when you pray, believe you receive it, you shall have it. All problems of God, Jesus, yes, and Jesus, amen. I can give you a number of trips. I'll just use those two. So God has done his part, and he's going to continue to do his part. So if something happened when we didn't receive the manifestation of something, obviously, but in the same realm, it may have been something we didn't know. Doesn't make God bad. Doesn't make us bad. Doesn't make us a bad Christian because we didn't receive. But here's the thing. What tends to happen is people tend to blame God. It doesn't make God bad if we happen not to have received. It may have just been something we just, that we just didn't know. Case in point, you can't blame the two-week-old baby who doesn't know what two times two is. He just doesn't, he just didn't know. Doesn't make him a bad baby. He just didn't know. So now, it's our job to get the knowledge. Why? Because the Bible says you can reference those scriptures there. When Jesus was here talk, in context, he was talking to the Sadducees. But the biblical principle we can extract out of that, because we talked about principle a week before, right? The biblical principle that we can extract out of that for our lives is, it says, we do error. We know not the scriptures, nor the power of God. The Bible also says right there in Hosea, people perish for a lack of knowledge. And then it goes on to say, then we reject the knowledge. So again, if we have it in the past, if I say in the past, in the past, have not to receive something, let's no longer question God. But don't question ourselves either. Don't say, all right, well, this mm -hmm. is, I'm, I'm a, must be a bad Christian because I know this is so-and-so who is the usher. She received when she prayed with regards to, you know, her, her child going through a town. And go, Why didn't I receive? Let's look at the process. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, how many of you know your ABCs? Okay, okay, that's, that's a question. I was like, okay, let's go, let's go. How many, how many of you can say it backwards? Z, okay. Amen. Okay. All right. So here's, here's what God is saying. God is saying, if you follow these ABCs of faith, his process, he, not me, because I don't have the heaven to help put you in, he guarantees biblical results when you follow his process. Amen? Amen. So, again, take your pictures, make sure you're taking your notes. Because from this point on, you never ever want to have a time where you ever ask God for something and didn't receive. You do this, you will always receive what you ask for. Did he just say always? It ain't me talking. It's God speaking about his word. I don't have to have any help with you. I'm just the vessel. You got it? All right, so all, all of you who know your ABCs of faith, we know we start with the letter A, right? A is what? Ask the Father in Jesus' name. Let me underline this. Ask the Father in Jesus' name. Why do we want to emphasize that? From this point on, those of us on Facebook Live, I want you to hear me. From this point on, never ask Jesus anything. Uh, heresy. Did he just say that? Ask the Father in Jesus' name. But don't blame me just because I'm, don't blame me, I'm sorry. Don't believe me just because I'm saying you be like the Bereans. You go back and say the word to make sure what you heard is true. Mm -hmm. Why? So let's see the proof text. 
John 16, 23 to 24. This is Jesus talking. And in that day, now, the background context is Jesus talking to his disciples, talking to them, preparing them for a time that he's going to be with the Father. So he's saying, when he's ascending, he's going to be with the Father. He says, in that day, because in that day now, he was talking to them about the day when he was going to go and be with the Father. He was no longer be walking on the earth in a physical manifestation. Is Jesus walking around now? Is the physical manifestation of Jesus walking around now? Do we physically see Jesus walking on the earth? We are, are we, okay. we no longer, what does the Bible say? Where is Jesus right now? He's at the right hand of the Father. We clear with that? Yes. Jesus currently right now is at the right hand of the Father. He is not physically walking around. You got that? So, he's preparing them for that day. When is that day? That day is now. Because he's no longer, he was no longer physically, at this time he was with them. But he was preparing for a day that he was no longer going to be physically walking around. So he's saying, in that day, what day is that? That day is then, that's when he, when he ascends, that day is currently now. Because he's not physically walking around. He exists, Jesus is alive, don't get it twisted. But he's, the Bible says he's at the right hand of the Father. That's what the Bible says. He says, in that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Why? Because he, they didn't have to. The disciples were with them every day. So they didn't have to ask, hey, Jesus, in your name, can I have a drink of water? No, they just asked him because he was already with them. But he's preparing for a day when he was no longer going to be with them. He, so they had to wonder, like, what do you do? We're, we've been used to just asking you directly. When you're no longer here, what do we do? He said, in that day, you don't ask me anything anymore. You ask the Father in my name. Until now, you've asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive that your joy may be full. Another proof text. John 15 and 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you should, that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. Another proof text. In that day, we're still talking about that day is today because he's no longer physically walking around. In that day, you will ask in my name. And I do not say to you that I shall pray the Father for you. We can just pause right there. He said, to him, I'm not saying I'm going to pray to the Father for you. Why? For the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came forth from God. So could it have been one of those times in the past? You were sincere. All of us were. But maybe we just didn't know the process. Maybe there may have been times we prayed to Jesus and not to the Father in Jesus' name. God is sovereign. He can do whatever he wants. But he's, he allows himself to go by his word so that people can know that he's not a man he should lie. So if he, get, he can't just automatically just go out of that system. Now, God can do whatever he wants. Yes, things will happen without people asking because that's part of being part of Christian package. Yes. But he also set up a system where he wants people to connect with him. So example, how do you do this? We just, just use an example. Father, in Jesus' name, please allow me to get this new job. I ask these things in Jesus' name, because Father, your word says, but I've asked the Father in Jesus' name to give it to me. I ask these things in Jesus' name. So it doesn't matter whether you say it at the beginning or at the end, but whatever you're asking, do it in Jesus' name. But you, the key is you got to ask the Father in Jesus' name. And then when you ask, ask and forget it. We'll get to that. But again, when I say ask and forget it, we're talking about don't be concerned about the issue anymore and don't be concerned about the how our job is just to believe now B so you can see the faith right B is believe believe is convinced something is true without any sense realm evidence believe knowing something is true without any sense realm evidence when we say sense realm we're talking about our five senses, see, feel, taste, touch, smell, OK? 
convinced something is true without any sense or evidence. Now, it takes four parts of this. First is the act of your will. It's a choice. You have to choose to believe that something is true without any sense or evidence. That's a choice. Number two, this is so key for us as believers. When you're asking God for something, when you're asking God for something, do the biblical principles of like Philippians 4 and 8. You can also look at Genesis 15 and 5 there. But as you're asking, this is key, as you're asking, imagine, see yourself receiving whatever it is. So case in point, when we were praying for Melania and Diet to receive scholarships back when they were babies, every time I thank God, and certainly when I initially asked, I saw graduation caps. I saw a certificate. Guess what? Those things didn't currently exist. But I had to create an image. Why? Because I guarantee you the enemy is going to throw another image at you. The minute you ask for something, I don't care, I don't care if you just misplaced your pen at work, he's going to throw another image at you as if you, you, you run out of pens or, or, you're, or you're going spastic or something like that. He's going to throw another image at you to get you thinking that you can't receive whatever it is. So you have to lock in on an image. Why? Not just because it's a, a positive thing to do. No, it's the word. Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are of a good report, meditate on these things. That's Philippians 4 and 8. That's a, a biblical principle. So when you're asking and you're believing, lock in on an image. See yourself receiving whatever that is. So number three, you do this now. I believe when I say that, I'm saying I believe that all of you are great in your walk with faith. So let's just check this out. How many of you have ever heard of heaven? How many of you, just raise your hand if you've ever heard of heaven. Okay, praise God. How many of you believe there is a heaven? Okay. How many of you have ever seen it? What? You mean to tell me that you're believing for something that you don't see? You have no proof. You have no physical proof that heaven exists. None. But yet you're believing by act of your faith in God that heaven is real. Amen. It's not like you have anyone coming down from heaven like, yo, heaven was a bomb day. He can't wait till you come on up here. <laughs> you have no, no one doing that. In fact, the Bible even talks about that when somebody said that, can I go up and uh, uh, help out? He was like, no, they should have done it when it was there. I'm paraphrasing. You got it? The point is, if you can believe for heaven, and you're not going to get the proof of that until you're going to be with the Lord. So y'all believe it all through your lives. But something that's not going to manifest until you're going to be with the Lord. No proof. No physical proof. So if you can believe in heaven, what's a new job? What's the, your toe getting healed? Come on, we can do this. If you can believe in heaven, you can believe all, for everything else that, that you desire. Amen? Amen? All right, so number four, test time. Who likes pop quizzes? Pop quizzes? Okay, all right. Pop, <laughs> one is pop, pop quizzes. Okay. All right. He said, believing is convinced something is true without any sense realm evidence. Believing something is true without any sense realm evidence. So, here's the quiz. No, we're going to say test. Here's the test. How many of you believe there's someone in front of you that God is using to teach today in this Bible study? How many of you believe that? Okay, there we go. I love y'all. <laughs> but you didn't pass. What do we say? We said believing is convinced something is true without any sense or real evidence. You don't have to believe I'm standing here. You know it because you can see it with your eyes. Believing would have occurred last week when you saw the flyer. Or praise the Lord like we were on the bridge radio. Praise the Lord. You, that's when the believing would have happened. That's what we got to get to. We got to believe without seeing. We don't want to be like Thomas in the Bible. Jesus died. Rose again. He's walking around. I'm paraphrasing the story. But check it out. A number of people saw him. When Thomas heard about it, he said, I believe when I see the nail prints in his hand. This was one of his disciples. Jesus comes through and he sees him. He sees the nail prints. He said, okay, cool. So Jesus said, that's good, Thomas. You believe. That's good. He said, well, blessed are those who believe without seeing. Believing, being convinced of something that's true without any sense from evidence. Amen? So that's the believing. So A is what? Asking. There you go. B? Good. C, confession and confidence. Confession. 
In the Greek, when we talked about this before, in the Bible, the uh, original language was written in three languages. You had the Hebrew, which was mainly the Old Testament. You had Aramaic, which is some old and some new. And then also you have the New Testament, which was written in the Greek. In the Greek here, uh, we brought it to the word confession, it's homologio. That's a, it means same, the same thing in the Greek, in agreement with God. Does that make sense? So when you're asking and believing God for something, here's the key. This is the stickler for people. From this point on, when you ask and believe God something for something, only, everybody say only. Only. Only allow the words to come out of your mouth that are consistent with the word of God and consistent with what you ask and believe for. Do not let any other words come out. Case in point, I used to tell when I was doing youth, as a youth pastor, as a youth ministry, and I will say to the youth, there's no sense in wanting to be a cheerleader. You ask God for it, you believe it, you went ahead and signed the form, and then walked away and said, but I ain't gonna make it. You just dug up your faith seed. You're, when you sow, you're sowing seeds of faith. When you say something against that, you dug it up. We're talking about the unseen, we're talking about the kingdom process. Amen? God operates in an unseen realm. This is the kingdom thing. So only say things that are consistent with the word of God and consistent with what you ask and believe God for. You're, when you do that, you are watering your seed. How do you do your confession? So in case in point, let's say, you, let's say someone asked with regards to a new tire for their car. They've asked and believed God for it. From that point on, until they receive the new tire, now all they're doing is watering their seed. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the new tire for my car. Guess what? Even though the tire isn't there yet. Because it's an unseen thing. It's in an unseen realm. We're using our faith key to unlock what's in the unseen into the seen. Especially if there's a financial challenge about how much the tire costs. Because they cost a pretty thing these days. But you are believing God. Father, I thank you. I, 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 I see the tire. Even though you don't physically see it, you see it. You see the tire. Father, I thank you. Now what you're doing is you're watering your seed. When farmers plant... When farmers plant, they plant the seed. Now, I'm not the best farmer, so I'm just looking. They don't see the manifestation of that tomato just yet. In that in-between time, between time they put that seed in the ground and time the tomato comes, there's time. They're doing all they can. They're getting some sunlight. They're getting some water. When you're doing your confessions, that's what you're doing. You're watering your seed. Amen? Amen. Now, confidence. we got to be sure that God is who he is. We just said Again, believe in God. He's not a man and he will lie. Amen? You can reference all those scripture references there. So confession and confidence. D. D is do it. Faith without works is dead. You can reference that scripture. Again, when, when I see the scripture, when you see the scriptures there, those are examples of the biblical principles there in there. The context may be the same. But you, both, it, the principles go for both the context in the scripture as well as what we can apply in our lives today. That scripture is obviously true. Faith without works is dead. What does that mean? You ask God for a new job. You believe. You don't need to see the faith. You're doing your confession. You're doing your confidence. At some point in time, you got to go to the interview. you got to send in a resume. Does that make sense? What you're doing by your actions, you are walk, You are doing corresponding actions with regards to your faith. You're doing faith corresponding actions when you do the action. Even though a person doesn't have the job, when they are walking to that interview, they are walking out their faith because God needs to see that part too. It's one thing to be sitting a hole and believe and ask and believing, but at some point in time, there's got to be some action to it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Faith without works is dead. So again, A is what? B. Believe. C. D. Do it. There we go. All right. E is expected. We reference a couple of scriptures there, principles. But you can look at, uh, again, you can look at the Second Corinthians one. Again, all the promises of God in Jesus are yes in Jesus. Amen. Here's another one. You can look at Luke 1 37. That was in the Amplified. For with God, nothing is ever impossible. No word. It says, no word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment. We got to expect God to be God. Yeah. 
I'm not walking around saying I'm God. Then you can say, oh, no, I don't think so. You got to expect God to be God. This is what scripture, when it comes to selling, he says, prove me now. He's double dog daring us to sell in hell. We have a right to expect God to be God. So expect it. F is forgiveness and forbearing. This, this is where things get a little sticky for believers sometimes. But after, not after the day. Amen? Amen. Forgiveness is a core of who God is and why he's in his son. We can't walk around holding things against people. Unforgiveness defined is being mad beyond the moment. So you can't, as a believer, walk around in unforgiveness. Because God's going to say, did, did I just forgive you for what you just did 10 minutes ago? But you want to walk around in unforgiveness about your mother for what she did 25 years ago? Or your co-worker from last week? I'm not saying that what they did didn't happen. Because those are facts. But we're still, it's a fact of what they did to Jesus, too. Didn't he forgive them? We're called as believers to rise above that and forgive. Forgiveness and trust are different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Trust is both a choice and it's earned. Right. When you choose to go to a doctor for the first time, the very first time you go to your dentist, that's a choice. But your trust is going to be all up in your mouth, and and they get into, they get they may get the uh, the, the scraper when they clean it out. We talk about just a hygienist, but you've trusted that person for the very first time who you don't personally know. And then trust is also earned. So we're talking about the difference between trust and forgiveness. Forgiveness is an obligation. It's a choice as believers. But it is what God is obligated for us to do. Amen? Amen. Forbearing. Forbearing means this. There's going to be some element of time between the time that we ask and the time that we receive. That element of time might be during the time that we're praying. It might be two minutes later. It might be 10 years later, maybe two weeks later, four days, three months. But the guarantee is you stay in faith in God, you will get the end result. The element of time is just part of the process. Everybody say, it's just a process. It's just a process. It's just, a process. It's just part of the process. There's going to be some element of time. But you stay in faith in God, you will get the end result. Case in point. Now, how many of you have ever heard the story of Jesus in the fig tree? I thought you heard it. You know, Jesus cursed the fig tree, and next thing you know, you hear about the fact that it, you know, with it and die. Okay, so let's look. Let's look at this translation version and, and see what this is speaking to. Mark eleven twenty two to 20, 12 through twenty two. Now the next day, when they, because Jesus was with them, when they had come out from Bethany, everybody say Bethany. Bethany. He, talking about Jesus, he was hungry, and seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps. He would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to it, Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. He spoke faith. That's the moment. He spoke the faith. And his disciples heard it. Now, so they so that means it's connected to the previous, the scriptures are still going on, so the so is still part of the story. Amen. So they came to Jerusalem. Then Jesus went into the temple, and a lot of you heard this part of the story, and, and began to drive out those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he would not allow anyone to carry wares through the temple. Then he taught, saying to them, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer? For all nations, but you have made it a den of thieves. And the scribes and chief priests heard it and sought how they might destroy him, for they feared him because all the people were astonished at his teaching. When evening had come, he went out of the city. Now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dry from the roots. And Peter, remember, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. So Jesus answered and said, have faith in God. He pushed them to have an expectation. It didn't surprise him. He said to them, I'm pushing you. Have faith in God. He wasn't surprised. 
He knew what the end result was. He was moved by the time it took. Jesus like, this doesn't surprise me. I'm challenging you. You have faith in God. For, meaning it's connected, for assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, mountain represents circumstances of life, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. A lot of times we focus on the instantaneous miracle that Jesus did, and he clearly did them. But there are also times when he purposely had time in the word where he had to wait for the manifestation between the time he spoke faith and the time he physically saw it. Another example is when he said, let us go to the other side. Man, in between that, he had a storm. He fell asleep. But guess what? The guarantee was they did get to the other side. That fig tree did wither. He spoke it. They went from Bethany to Jerusalem. He turned over some tables. Night came, morning came, then they had to walk back. And there was a nice little distance, not a big, big distance, but a nice little distance between Bethany and Jerusalem, if you look at the maps. There was some time between the time he spoke faith and the time he received. So if that happened with Jesus, don't you think that might happen with us? Mm-hmm. But guess what that guarantee was? That victory did with it and died. Mm-hmm. So you mm-hmm. have faith in God. Amen? Amen. Now, a, so I'll ask this question. So how long do you wait? As long as it takes. As long as it takes. <laughs> Nancy said, if you're willing to wait forever, you won't have to. So A is what? B? Believe. C? Confession and confidence. D? Do it. E? Expect it. F? Forgiveness and forbearance. Good class. Good class. G is gratitude and get away from sin. Gratitude. Say thank you. We're taught this even in the natural by our parents. What parents have taught us, when someone gives you something, what do you say? Thank you. you. We're taught that even in the natural. How much more should we thank the true and living God when he blesses with us something that we pray for? And as you walk in faith and maturity in God, I challenge all of us to say thank him when you're asking. Because you already know it's already a biblical guarantee. So you thank him while you ask him, you thank him while you wait, and you certainly thank him when you receive. Amen? Give God some gratitude. All right, now, get away from sin. The Bible says, again, all fall, all fall short. You got me? So all commit sin. We talk about believers. This is for believers. Because we already know that unbelievers are currently living in sin. This is for believers. So we know that believers do sin. Okay? Now for 1 John 1 9 is 4. God gave us, out of his grace and mercy, gave us 1 John 1 9. And if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. That was speaking to believers. So we understand that part. But what this is referring to is the practicing of it. Don't want to get better at it. Don't begin to want to practice the sin. Get away from that. Remember, we talk about that safe. It already exists. It already has the blessings you want. Your faith is the key that unlocks what's in there from the unseen realm to the seen realm. Unforgiveness, even though it's on its way down, pauses it. The practicing of sin pauses it. Not the fact that you may have committed a sin yesterday when someone took the pen. If you were sincere and you asked God forgiveness, he might away. He's like, done deal. Move on. Keep going. You got me? Now, you need to practice to make sure you don't want to steal the pen anymore. You know what I mean? But we're talking about the practicing of sin. Get away from that. Get away from wanting to, to do that thing more and more. Have the sincere heart of help, asking God to help you get out of that and walk that out. Does that make sense? Yes. So we want to stop the practicing of sin because currently that causes those blessings coming down. Amen? Amen. So A is what? Ask. Ask the Father in Jesus' name. Okay. A is what? Ask the Father in Jesus' name. B? Believe. C? Confession and confidence. D. Do it. E. Expect it. F. Forgiveness and forbearance. There we go. G. Gratitude and get away from sin. Good class. Good class. Now, follow the system. It's a checklist. Use it as a guide. Use these ABCs of faith as a checklist. So when you go back and you write your notes, 
Calm down. So you you want to have in your mind when you're asking for something, you want to, did I, all right, let me go down my check. Did I ask? Did I, did I believe you? Did I see? You know what I'm saying? You want to have your checklist. Why? Because it's a system that God guarantees that works. But don't guess at it. Have the system down. Again, don't deviate. It takes the guesswork out. You have to wonder. It takes the guesswork out. Just follow the system. Write it up as a checklist. Now, after you do A, the rest of the time until you receive, you're doing B through G. After you ask, you're doing B through G because here's, here's another thing to break up some religion. You only need to ask one time. And there's a difference between the prayers of petition and your daily bread. Daily bread may be things you're praying for your kids for every day. Father, I thank you that they're getting home safely every day. You know, we're having a great day. Those are things, that's your daily bread. You do that every day. But the things you're petitioning God for, for other things, you only need to ask one time. The rest of the time, you're just doing B through G. Now, I know you may have heard Cousin Pookie asking, 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 but here's the challenge with that. It can create doubt. Because God is saying, I heard you. Why do you keep asking? Because now I'm wondering whether you're doubting whether, to why you gotta keep asking. Now the enemy is using that to plant seeds of doubt based on the, the timing of the manifestation of the thing. Only ask once, but don't, well, let's look at me, let's look at the scripture, let's look at the word. Now this is the confidence in God, not in ourselves. This is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, his will is his word, right? He hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Only ask once. After you ask, after you do A, you're just doing B through G until the manifestation comes. Now, a couple caveats to remember. Number one, don't, we talked about this before, don't ask for wrong motives. So, in the Greek word there is kakos, we talked about that before, don't ask amiss. What does that mean? That means, don't ask with improper motives. Don't ask wrongly. So what does that mean? Don't ask with the intent of, you know, doing something bad. Or, with regards to, um, you know, greed. In front of, so if you ask God for a car and your intent is to go and flash around everybody, he's like, oh, let's pause. Because your heart isn't right. Does that make sense? He doesn't mind you having a new car, but all you're trying to do is show off in front of people. That's wrong motives. He also means don't be asking about your supervisor killing your supervisor. <laughs> your supervisor falls down a ditch. Now that's witchcraft. That's wrong motives. Does that make sense? So when you ask, don't ask for wrong motives. Number two, you nor God can and will change the will of man. Change man's will. God has made us, he blessed us to be free moral agents. He's given us free will. So what does this mean? You can't override, and God will just choose not to, he's sovereign, but he chooses not to, override the man, I mean the will of man. What does that mean? When someone comes to you and they ask you to pray for them, you do the ABCs of faith. But if they happen not to get it, whatever the thing was, don't let that rock your faith. You don't know where they were in their faith. If they're believing God for a, a, you know, a new position, like a, a, a new position, you don't know whether they ever even sent in the application for the new position. You don't know if they were doing C, if they were wearing their seed. Does that make sense? So you don't know. So don't let that rock your faith and begin to question God. No, you did what you were supposed to do. What I challenge you to do is to make sure that you get with them. And this also happens sometimes when sometimes when we're praying for people that are having a health challenge. If things happen to go negative, don't let that rock your faith. You don't know where they were. Now, it might have been in the wee hours of the night they may have chosen that they wanted to go to be with the Lord. You just don't know. So what I'm saying is, and without judgment, what I challenge all of us to do is, hey, you want to do the ABC faith? You're going to pray for people? Say to them, hey, 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 I'm going to believe for you for this new position, but let me teach you these ABCs of faith so 
We need this thing together so we're not counteracting each other. Amen? Amen. So these are just caveats you got to know and understand. Now, number three, if it happens to occur that the blessed end result has not yet come, as we say yet, in your time, remember, one, is still on his way before bearing. Remember, the fig tree, it did wither and die. And number two, be humble and willing to know it's possible that maybe you just didn't do something in the process. Let God speak to your heart like, oh, yeah, I forgot, God, I didn't, I didn't do E. Or I didn't do D. Be humble enough to say, my bad. Not saying, God, you're bad. That's my bad. Number four, again, we talked about this earlier a little bit, but don't focus on the how God will do it. God is sovereign. He will do it the way he wants to do it. You can reference these scriptures here. Jesus spitting. Now down here, spitting <laughs> isn't always a positive thing. With regards to what happened here, in Mark 7 and 33, there was a, a person that was both deaf and mute, and Jesus held his ears closed, shook his tongue, and then spit on the ground and got the man and God got the manifestation. In the meantime, before, well, after he spit on the ground, then he actually said a word in Aramaic, which was like, be open, and then the manifestation came. He spit on the ground like this, and he got it. So we don't care how Jesus does it. And he, I mean, how God does it. And then the other one, in Mark 8 and 23, God was blind. Jesus spit in his eyes. Like, who thinks about that? So we don't care how God does it. Amen? Amen. He's sovereign. He'll do it the way he wants to. We already talked about before with regards to Jesus and the tax money. They, they were wanting some tax, and they questioned Peter. Jesus said, told Peter, there, there, this, <laughs> go to that fish and get the money out for you and him. Who goes to fish and get money? Right. We don't, but it's a kingdom thing. We don't care how God does it. We just believe, amen? Yeah. Saints, you can do this. You can do this. You can do this. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You can do this. Amen? Amen. Give 